The undead seem to be walking about everywhere these days, from TV to movies to video games and more. The term zombie dates to about the early 19th century and was linked to its current general definition around 1929. Since then, zombies have been redefined, humanized and even romanticized. But they're not necessarily unique. Animals exhibiting zombie-like behaviors have been on the planet for a long time. In nature, it's usually the result of a parasite controlling its host, as we'll find out. For some of these creatures, the zombie apocalypse has already arrived and isn't ending anytime soon. Here are 12 zombie creatures that really exist. Number 12. Worker Exploitation Have you ever seen movies where a condemned person is forced to dig their own grave? That's kind of like the relationship between the insect and the arachnid here. There's a species of parasitoid wasp in Costa Rica that will temporarily paralyze a spider known as Plesiometa agira to plant a larva inside its body. Over the next couple of weeks, the host arachnid goes about its business of constructing webs and catching insects. But there's a twist. After two weeks, the spider begins to construct a web that is completely unlike anything it has ever built before. The aberrant behavior is caused by a chemical released by the larva. After it molts and kills the spider, the larva builds a cocoon and places it in the middle of the web just constructed by the spider. Then the larva will pupate until emerging to mate and restart the cycle. Number 11. The Circle of Unlife There's a tapeworm that preys on fish and fish-eating birds that manages to manipulate multiple hosts during its life cycle. Schistocephalus solidus lays its eggs in the bowels of birds. As it reaches the water in bird droppings, the eggs hatch into larvae. Those are eaten by crustaceans called copepods. Those copepods are eaten by stickleback fish. At this stage, the tapeworm will somehow alter the fish's behavior. Instead of swimming with its school, it navigates to the warmer waters favored by the tapeworm. Leaving the school also makes the fish more likely to become prey for a seabird. And of course, that is precisely where the insidious tapeworm wants to lay its eggs. And so, the cycle of living death completes itself once again. Number 10. Ant Decapitating Flies Did you know there's a small species of humpbacked flies that was introduced to southern US by accident in the 1930s? It turned out to be a good thing because the flies are parasitoids of fire ants. The female fly will inject her eggs into the ant's thorax. The larvae feed off the ant's muscle and tissue as they work their way to the creature's brain, which is eventually eaten. For want of a better word, the ant has become brainless, and the rest of the colony doesn't even notice. After about four weeks of wandering, the invaders cause the ant's head to fall off its body so it can emerge to reproduce. And that's why these parasites are known as ant decapitating flies. Number 9. Zombie Pill Bugs They look like tiny armadillos, but they often serve as unwitting hosts to a nefarious parasitic worm called Plagiorhynchus cylindricaeus. With a name like that, you know it has to be an evil organism. Just hope I said that name right. Anyway, the parasite thrives in the guts of birds called starlings. Once the worm passes through the bird's bowels, the pill bug is there to scoop the poop. Because pill bugs evidently like that sort of thing. But once the parasite inhabits the pill bug, it assumes control of its brain and causes the creature to do things it normally wouldn't, such as attracting the attention of a starling, which happens to feed on pill bugs. Once consumed, the parasite completes its journey and is ready to start the cycle all over again. Number 8. The Walking Corpses Well, we've covered a few animals that exhibit zombie-like behavior. Now let's take a look at what turns humans into zombies. It's nothing as exotic as something you'd see on The Walking Dead. The behavior is caused by a rare mental illness known as Cotard's Delusion, or Walking Corpse Syndrome. Someone suffering from this condition often believes that they are dead already, or that they believe that they are missing internal organs, blood, or that their body is putrefying. Sufferers exhibit severe chronic depression and tend not to bathe or eat. They can also spend a lot of time in cemeteries, where they feel they're communing with their fellow corpses. Antidepressant drugs and the use of electroconvulsive therapy are the most common forms of treatment for the condition. Number 7. Zombie Crabs When these parasitic barnacles jump onto crabs, they're basically hitchhiking. That's not so awful. But what they do to male crabs is humiliating. The marine animals cause their host to lose their drive to procreate. 
the barnacle inserts itself into a space in the crab's body where it proceeds to molt. That's logical because it no longer needs a shell with the crab under control. Then, whatever energy the crab would have used for reproduction is diverted to advance the parasite's agenda. That allows it to grow and release its eggs. When it does so, the crab assists with spreading them by using its claws to stir the water. Afterwards, the mind-controlled crab will even care for the eggs as if it were his own. Number 6. The Zombie Bodyguard in Central and North America and New Zealand, adult female Glyptopantus leaves wasps will lay up to 80 eggs inside a young caterpillar's body. All is well as the caterpillar continues to grow, but eventually those little wasp larvae will burst out of its body. That doesn't kill the caterpillar though. It survives to be of further service to the wasps as their bodyguard. All but a couple of wasps settle into pupate. Those remaining wasps then manipulate the caterpillar and position it next to the cocoons where it won't feed and doesn't move. But if a predator approaches, the caterpillar will thrash violently to scare it away. Soon after the adult wasps hatch from their cocoons, the zombie caterpillar dies from starvation. But they really owe their bodyguard a big thank you. Experts say that having a caterpillar around significantly increases their chances of survival. Number 5. Toxoplasma gondii while this parasite uses zombie-like rodents to achieve its ends, it also achieves the unwitting help of cats. That's because cats are the only known hosts that are conducive to the parasite's reproduction. To get at the felines, it first infects mice and alters their behaviour. Instead of fearing cats, the mice are emboldened to approach their natural predator. That increases the odds of the rodent being eaten, which is just what the parasite intends. Once there, it can pose a potential threat to humans. Not that it will zombify you like it does mice, but humans can be exposed to the parasite while cleaning the cat's litter box, which can result in the disease toxoplasmosis, which causes flu-like symptoms. But experts also think that such exposure could result in altered feelings and behaviour, which might include schizophrenia. Did you know that up to 50% of the global population is estimated to have been exposed to this parasite? Number 4. Zombie Ants One of the better known cases of animal zombies involves a parasitic fungus that's found in the rainforests of Thailand. This organism targets a certain species of carpenter ant and turns them into unwilling automatons. After the ants consume the fungus, their behaviour undergoes a drastic change. They no longer interact with their fellow ants and will wander about aimlessly until they tumble to the ground from the forest canopy. At this point, they have only one reason to exist, and that's to help their fungus master reproduce. Upon arrival at the lower level, they've reached a cool and moist environment where fungus can thrive. The insects will continue wandering about until they reach a prime location where the fungus can reproduce. After that's accomplished, the ant's head ruptures and it expires. That's part of the reproductive process. The spores that erupt from the insect's noggin will easily be contracted by a new set of ant victims. Experts say that the hyperparasite has wiped out entire ant colonies. But there's some good news for the ants, as you'll find out next. Number 3. Anti-Zombie Fungus Fungus So as we've just learned, things look gloomy for those infected carpenter ants. But researchers have found that the insects have a way of fighting back. When a colony member becomes infected, other ants can sense the change. So they'll lead the infected victim far away so it can't infect others. Also, it turns out that the ant's parasite has its own fungal parasite. The ants groom themselves with that hyperparasite. In return, the organism can stop the spread of infectious spores and limit fatalities within the ant colony. Number 2. Zombie Roaches you might walk your dog, but there's a species of parasitic wasp that is known to walk their cockroach. That's why this animal is also called the emerald cockroach wasp. The females of this species are known to sting a cockroach, delivering venom into the specific parts of the victim that paralyzes its front legs. A second sting is delivered into the victim's head, which cancels its instinct to escape. The wasp uses the antenna of the subdued cockroach as a leash and pulls it back to the burrow. Once there, it lays an egg on the roach's abdomen. When it hatches, the larva consumes the host's internal organs. In the best horror movie fashion, the roach is still alive during the process. The parasite then constructs a cocoon around itself while inside the roach's body, and that mercifully kills the host. Does that make you more sympathetic to cockroaches? Let us know in the comments! 
Number 1. Zombie Snails A flatworm known as the Green Banded Brood Sack uses a different type of animal as an intermediate host, snails and other gastropods. Once infected, the snail is overtaken by the parasite and it infests the host's head and eye stalks. In its quest to reproduce, the worm directs the snail to ascend to higher levels with more sunlight. Experts say it's all in an effort to make the snail more visible to predators like birds. It even resembles maggots or caterpillars and wriggles about to attract the bird's attention. Once consumed by the predator, the worms leave the snails for its new avian host. As it lays its eggs inside the bird, those are excreted back down to plants on the forest floor. As you've guessed, those will later be eaten by another generation of snails. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button and click the bell for notifications for our next exciting episode right here on Epic Wildlife.